Why are my legs like that? What, did, what am I doing here? What the heck am I doing here? I feel like I was getting ready to get yourself ripped. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ian here with B3 Strength and Performance. And as always, I am with our trainer, Abby. We have another wonderful workout for you today, guys. This is a full body workout. You will need two dumbbells, and I'll show you how to scale it down to one dumbbell for most movements. Well, let's take a look at our warm up today. We have three movements where we're gonna go from five reps, 10 reps, 20 reps. I want you to see how this works. We're gonna start with the launcher plank. Now this begins in a plank position, but then Abby's gonna rock her body back and then back to the plank, but her knees are not ground and they're not caving in. So she's gonna do five reps of this movement, then she's gonna stand up and she's gonna go into a combination of two jumping jacks and two punches for 10 rounds. So try to pay attention to how many rounds you're completing or just follow along with Abby. Then our final movement is the mid high knee. So we're not bringing them up too high, but just enough to warm up the legs and get the heart rate up. Are right, you ready to go? Yeah. All right, great work. Guys, get ready to go. We're going in four, three, two, one. We crush it right now, guys. We begin with that launcher plank. I'm gonna show a side view. So this is our starting position now. With mobility, it depends how far back you can go. So just challenge yourself to rock back as far as you're able to go, stretch out those shoulders, and then starting position where the shoulders are over the wrists. Rocking back. If you need to modify this movement, drop to the knees, and then rock back. But remember, getting five reps. Then we go up and we hit those jumping jacks. Keep in mind, if jumping is a problem, remember, we're gonna step it out, but we're still gonna work that full range of motion. Remember, we're gonna go two, and then we're gonna throw two punches. I love it when people use their feet and pivot when they throw punches, all right? So again, she's getting 10 reps. I'm not sure she can actually count this. Do you got it? Yeah? All right, so if you can't count this, because I know I lose count, just follow along. When she goes into high knees, you go into high knees. There you go, good work. I'm not convinced she's gonna be able to count to 20 with those high knees, because she gets highly distracted. Squirrel! Good, all right, back down guys. You've just conquered one minute of the warm up. Back into that launcher plank. Again, drive through the palms. Make sure you're really pushing, pushing and stretching out your body here. Good, let's get fired up today, guys. Good, drive them back and back up. And remember, when you go to that plank position, I want you to squeeze your quads. I want you to really elevate the upper back near the traps and shoulders and squeeze your glutes. Good, and rock them back and rock them back. There you go. Good work. Now, Abby can even amp up this warm-up if she wanted to. When she goes back into the launcher plank, she's gonna add a push-up as soon as she comes back to that plank position. Yeah, a lot of times we call this a rocking horse push-up. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I don't think she got 10. Anybody? There you go. Watch her next time, guys. All right, we are now two minutes in. Okay, now check out this movement. This is a great one. She's gonna. Get the push up and then she's gonna rock it back. She's in that plank, push up and rock it back. That's one way to do it. If you want a bigger challenge for the warm up, knock it out like that. If you don't, that's fine, but hold your plank for a little longer and pause and squeeze and contract those muscles. Great work. You look a little red when you got it from that. Just a little red. There you go. Isn't it Bob the Tomato? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's the one reference she got was Veggie Tales. Fantastic. All right, guys, you have 30 seconds, so keep them moving. Keep them moving. You gotta be real smooth, like, you know what I mean? It can't be too fast. You just gotta be smooth like the Matrix, guys. All right, 12 more seconds. Come on, Epps. All right, she's finishing up with those high knees. You wanna stay on them? We've got seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and what do you know? We're going into the world's greatest stretch here, guys. So we're gonna drop down, nice deep lunge, drive the elbows and chest to the ground, as low as you're able to go. If this is it, this is it, and that's okay. If you can get a little deeper, get a little deeper, then open up with that T-spine stretch, and then shift your weight, drive it back. We do this stretch a lot, you should be familiar with it. Stay on the same size, you got 35 seconds on this side, then we'll switch. Good. And if, if this is your first time watching a B3 Strength and Performance YouTube video, you should go ahead and subscribe. I don't know what you've been doing, but you might want to go ahead and do that. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, get all the alerts. We do videos Monday through Friday. 15 seconds here, guys. 
and push them back, push them back, push them back, way back. She probably got that reference too. I knew it, I knew it. Three, two, and one. Now let's switch that stance. Other side, you feeling good? You ready to rock it out? Oh, good. Well, I'm looking forward to zooming in on that face while you're doing the push press today. You'll see, guys. All right. Keep in mind, if any of the movements are too challenging with two dumbbells, we're gonna show you how to drop one of those dumbbells and work with just one. And if two dumbbells is too easy, and you've got a third one, uh, send us a video of how you did that. I mean, I got, I do, yeah, I'm getting a little parched for sure. All right, 20 seconds to go in this stretch, guys. Keep it going. Do you, is Abby in her spot? I feel like it's happening again, but whatever. Eight seconds, guys, keep at it. In four, three, two, and one. Great work, Abby. All right, guys, get yourselves ready. Get your two dumbbells, get a water bottle, and get a towel, and get ready to get crunk, guys. Blast one's coming up. Okay, everybody, we are ready for blast number one. Super simple movement, however, this one is gonna be super challenging. Abby's gonna demonstrate the movement that you're gonna perform, and it's done in a ladder. So you're gonna go two reps, four reps, six, and you're gonna keep building it up for five minutes. So we're gonna start with the bent over row, nice neutral spine, knees are apart, dumbbells are right beside your knees. You're gonna row up for two reps, and then you're gonna clean it up to the shoulders, and you're gonna go front squat for two reps. Then you will go four reps. And you're gonna keep that going, and your job is to hold on to those dumbbells for the whole time. After you hit five minutes, you're gonna set the dumbbells down, and you're gonna go into full burpee to half burpee. So full burpee, chest hits the ground, you hop up. The next one, you just hop to a plank, and you alternate for that 60 seconds. There you go, guys. It's simple, but it's challenging. You ready to go? She's finished over there. All right, there you go, guys. I'll show you how to scale some of these movements, uh, and I'll Hopefully I'll be able to hang in there. All right, you ready guys? We're going to three, two, one, and begin. Again, start with two reps. So if you need to scale the bent over row because the dumbbells are too heavy, you're gonna hold one dumbbell. We're gonna row, one, two, we're gonna flip it up. Now you can hold it this way or you can go goblet squat and drop them down for two reps. And then go right back into four reps. Just keep a nice neutral spine and drive your hips back so your weight isn't shifted forward. That will bother your lower back, all right? Now, if the front squat bothers you, I always talk about doing a box squat. So I'm gonna show you how I would do that with two dumbbells. First thing I would do, be close to the bench. I'm gonna go into that row, then I'm gonna pop them up, and I'm gonna sit down using a bench or a box, and then drive up, and then drive up. So that's how I would, whew, Man. Give me just a minute, guys. You, you keep going, you keep grinding. Mm. All right. Good, what are we at, four reps? Nice, all right. Ha. You do know we're, we're a minute in. Today is my day to celebrate this, guys. Come on, here we go. One, two. Good. Keep working them, guys. Think about that squat. When you're squatting, think about knees driving out over the toes. Too often we see knees falling forward, especially when you come up. I see a lot of people cave their knees in to get up. So I want you to really think about slowing it down and driving them out. You can also elevate the heels. That's a big factor in people's squats. We talk about it all the time. Elevate the heels. It will give you a better upper body posture and make sure your T-spine isn't in a compromised position. Good work. How's this feeling? Yeah, he's doing great. This is not easy. This is gonna be one of the biggest challenges you've faced yet, guys. Well, so what does that mean? That means if there's a point where you need to rest to recover, you should take that. I don't want anyone battling through a movement with poor movement patterning, okay? So if you're holding proper posture and technique, then keep grinding. If you lose it, if it caves, if you fall forward, if you can't keep a neutral spine, you need to set the weight down, you need to recover. 
All right, and when you pick up those dumbbells again, make sure you're squatting down, neutral spine to pick them up. Good, where are we at, you at 10? Definitely a challenge here, guys. No question, she's rocking the 25s over there, it's no joke. Why is she rocking 25? Well, our wonderful B3 members took all of our other dumbbells. Thank you guys for that. When we open the doors, Abby's gonna be super strong. <laughs> we all will be starting from scratch. Wonderful. Now, if you stay steady with these workouts, guys, you will not be starting from scratch. Good, keep them going. Remember how they modify, drop a dumbbell. Abby, why don't you hold on to those two? You only had 90 seconds to go. 90 seconds left here, guys, before we finish with the full burpee to half burpee. Good, so notice, knees out. Now, it's okay if the toes flare out just a little bit, that's okay. If you can keep them forward, keep them forward, but if they come out a little bit, that's okay, but still make those knees drive out and hips drive back. That's all right, great work. It's a challenging, challenging movement. So again, with your squat, pay close attention to what your body's doing. If you can keep those knees out, your glutes are gonna be more engaged and they're gonna be firing and they will help lift you out of the bottom of the squat. Good, so watch my feet. I'm gonna anchor in. I'm gripping the ground with my big toe, with the outside of my foot and the heel. I drive the knees out, and I'm gonna go as low as I am able to go. If you can go deeper, go deeper, as long as you can keep that thoracic extension, and then drive up, knees stay out. All right, we have 30 seconds. Almost there, guys. And really put a focus on coming up evenly. A lot of times we have hip shifts. Some people will shift from one side to the other. That's an underactive and overactive glute. So we just wanna make sure that we're thinking about that, we're feeling it. If you're not sure, you should definitely squat in front of a mirror and look for it. All right, we've got four, three, two, one, dumbbells down, guys. We go into that full burpee to half burpee. Let's hit it, here we go. Down, chest to the ground. Hop up, jump up high. Now, half burpee. Good, chest to the ground. Half burpee. Chest to the ground. Half burpee, keep that going, guys. You have 40 seconds to go. If you need to step the burpee, step it out. If you need to elevate the upper body for the burpee, elevate your upper body. Come on, F. Remember, don't think about time. Think about going from full burpee to half burpee. Make that your focus. Come on, keep rocking them, keep rocking them. All right, guys, 20 seconds to go. Stay grinding. Stay on that grind, guys. Come on, you're almost there. Good work. I'm gonna want you to take a big break after we finish this blast. We got 12 seconds, keep going. Good, half burpee to full burpee. Good, nice, solid posture when you kick out to that plank. We've got five, four, three, Two and one, great work, nice job. All right guys, I'm recommending 90 seconds to two minutes. If you don't think you need that, then you need to amp it up for that next blast. Okay everybody, we are now ready for blast number two. We're gonna change from going to up with a ladder to going down with a drop set. We're gonna start at 12 reps and subtract two reps every time. Here are your two movements. We're gonna begin with the renegade row. Now we want you to perform this movement from a high plank position if you are able to. We're also gonna put a pause in there. So when you row, hold and squeeze for about a second or two and then go to the other side. You're gonna to count to 12 in your very first round. Then you're gonna hop it up and go right into the alternating push press. So you're gonna do one side at a time holding both dumbbells. You're gonna press up, that's one. You're gonna hit the other side, that's two, and then you're gonna to go to 12. All right, any questions there? Nope, everybody seems like they got it. I'm gonna show you how to scale this movement. Well, the burpees are coming up. You'll know when it's time. Don't even worry about it. All right, here we go, guys. Let's start with that renegade row, and I'll begin with scaling. In three, two, one, we grind. Okay, guys, if you need to scale this renegade row, several ways to do it. You can drop to the knees, or my preference is that frog pose position. Still, want you to squeeze. Squeeze. And keep grinding. All right, nice little pause here. Um, Abby, this is a drop set. I'm gonna need you to start at 12. <laughs> it's okay, I was waiting on it. Good, okay. So we're gonna go to 12. Again, one, 
Put a little pause on it. Two, I was like, man, she might not be pausing very long. There you go. <laughs> now, keep your core tight here. Draw that belly button in and brace. There. Now, squeeze. There you go. You make that sound. That will put your core in the right position. Again, then we'll hop it up, lift them up, and work the push press. We're gonna drive those knees out, drive the weight up, drive the knees out, drive the weight up. Now, we can modify this several different ways. If getting down in a plank position bothers you, we're gonna go back to that bent over row, and we're gonna alternate that position. So hopefully you can get down. I want you down so your core is also engaged. But if you need to modify the push press, you're just gonna take that one dumbbell and you're gonna drive that weight up. Drive that weight up overhead. All right, so again, many ways to scale this. Just do your very best. Keep in mind, you're going from 12 down to 10, down to eight. It feels very different now, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, good work. So the more you can incorporate your legs, the better off you're gonna be here. So you're really gonna to wanna to drive Get that leg drive and explode up, going into hip extension. Use your glutes and quads to fire that dumbbell up. So timing is key here, guys. All right, so we're down. Remember that pause. Remember that pause. Squeezing that back. Now I'm a big proponent of doing some type of row every day. Whether it's a bent over row with a barbell, a renegade row, an alternating locomotive row, some type of row. I think it's good for everybody to really focus on their back muscles. All right, we're rounded most of the time. We're always working in that forward anterior world. So our shoulders are overworked, pecs are overworked, and we're stuck here. Work that back. Good job, abs. All right, we're getting close. We've got two minutes, 25 seconds. I like how she like stares me down, like I did this. Wow. All right, so you're either at that renegade row or you're at that push press position. Let's get it, guys. Let's grind time. Remember to breathe out. Try to lock out at the top. Keep working. Good. Did I count? No, I didn't count. I didn't even count. I didn't count at all. Just follow her along. Follow her along. There you go, good, drive them up. All right, minute and 45 seconds. Then we're gonna go into burpees. But we're gonna go half burpee to quarter burpee. And I'm gonna demonstrate those when we got about 10 seconds left in these movements. Go on, Good, so she got a nice wide position. She's doing everything she can to keep those hips from going side to side and externally rotating up. I want them to stay square as much as possible, which gets harder and harder as you get fatigued. If you can't stay square, drop to your knees, and go into the frog position and engage your core. All right, come on, F. 75 seconds. 75 seconds, folks. Keep working. Come on, get that hold. Take your time here. As you're holding that position, breathe out. Good, keep working. Good, swing them up, swing them up. Good, so sometimes you're gonna have to go into a hip hinge to swing up that weight, just like she did. She went that hip hinge, like a skier and kicked it up into a clean so she's ready for that push press. All right, 45 seconds to go. Then we're going from half burpee to a quarter burpee. And a quarter burpee is just from a plank position hopping up into a squat hold. There you go, way to drive them. Come on. All right, guys, 30 seconds to go. Come on. She's dropping them down. Let's go, Abs. Let's get right back to it. Come on, here we go. Good, keep your breathing under control. Keep your muscles tight. Squeeze your body, squeeze those glutes, squeeze the quads. When you're pulling that dumbbell up, try to pull with your elbow instead of squeezing it with your grip. All right, 12 seconds. Come on, we got 10 to go. You're almost there, Abs, and we go right in that quarter burpee. We've got five, four, three, two, one. Scoot over, guys. Half burpee to quarter burpee and go. Half burpee at the top, quarter burpee. Squat position, half burpee at the top, quarter burpee, squat position. Try to get that thoracic extension when performing that movement. Come on, let's keep going. Good, nice control. You don't have to go super fast here. Do we want to get the heart rate up? Absolutely, but we also want good technique, good form. Good, way to jump, way to jump. Come on, 35 seconds, guys. 
Try to stick with Abby. Let Abby be that marker for you that you continue to try to move with her. Come on, Abs. Good, good. Stay with it, guys. 25 seconds, then a big break's coming up. You don't get the big break. There you go. Come on, 20 seconds. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. All right, we've got 15. Try not to stop here, guys. Come on, Abby. Right back down, right back down. Good, let's count it down. We've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Stay moving. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Great work. Way to crush. Great job, guys. I want you to take 90 seconds to two minutes and get ready for our final blast. Our final blast. All righty, folks, we've made it to the final blast. Let's check out our movements here, guys. We're going to do this a little differently. We're not drop setting. We're just doing reps. So we're going to start with a seated shoulder press here. So this is super important to keep a nice neutral spine and to get that thoracic extension. So we're going to get five shoulder presses. Then we're going to lay it back on down and we're going to knock out 10 floor presses. You can elevate your legs. You can bend your knees. That's totally up to you how you do this. Make sure your elbows are tracking at a 45 degree angle and they're not flared out. All right, so we're going to perform these two movements for five minutes and then we finish with quarter burpee to mountain jumpers. Yes. All right, you ready to go? I hope you're ready to go, guys. Let's get this. Let's finish this thing strong. We're going in three, two, one, and go. So let's talk scaling and modifications. So if the dumbbell's too heavy, then you're just gonna have that seated position, but you don't wanna be rounded. You wanna have a nice neutral spine and thoracic extension here, and then use one dumbbell to press. After you get that fifth rep, you can go to two dumbbells if needed. The other option is to lay back and press with that one dumbbell. Now, I'm not keeping my core lazy and flaccid. I'm tightening everything up. So I want you to do the same. Now you can get more core involvement by lifting the legs or bending the knees as we work through those reps. But I want you to take your time here. Good, breathe out every time you contract your chest or shoulder muscles. So that's what she is doing right now. Every time she lifts, breathing out, nice exhale and then back up to that shoulder press. Now, if we're really getting fatigued here, I may have to alternate, all right? That's up to you. You decide what works best for you, and we press. Nice control for your core. If this is really getting to you, another thing you may decide to do is go to a seated bench or a half kneeling or kneeling position when you're doing your shoulder presses. How are we feeling over this? Getting fatigued? Yeah, that may happen, guys. You've already done alternating push presses with the shoulders. You've already held your weight up here when you were performing your front squat, all right? You did a launcher plank earlier. So if your shoulders are getting fatigued, that's normal. Do I want you to die through that fatigue? Absolutely not. I want you to make the accommodation that you need to keep moving. All right, good. Way to get them. Now, if you only have so much weight at home, and it's not enough to challenge you in the way that you want to be challenged. I'm gonna show you how you can change that floor press to make it more challenging. So we're gonna go wide chest fly here. So I'm gonna take a wide, and then back up and squeeze your chest. We can also lift the legs up. And if I wanted to, I could make it really challenging by doing one at a time. That really challenges my core because the dumbbell is pulling me in one direction and my core and QL are fighting me to go the other way. All right, how we doing, Abby? I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking. Just want to check in on you. <laughs> there you go. I am, I'm, again, I can feel the dryness in my throat. All right, stay with it, guys. We have two and a half minutes, two and a half minutes left. Build those shoulders up, build the chest up, keep working, keep grinding, keep that breathing on point. Good. Good, way to drive them up. So again, she is fighting, and I can see her feet wanting to come up off the mat, and she's using her core to control all of that. That's why it's a really good movement to perform. Good, now, you may have to bend the knees. That may give you a little bit better positioning here, but if you can, straighten them out. Again, we're doing five reps. And then use your core, if you can, to control that weight on the way back. And then press. And a common mistake that people make, I was just doing it myself, is keeping that neck elevated to watch 
and look when that can strain your neck muscles. Good, abs are getting close. All right, you got 90 seconds to go, 90 seconds. Don't, we don't throw weights around in here, okay? All right, keep it under control. All right, come on abs, good. She's resting those shoulders, she's coming back at it. You may have to do the same thing, that's okay. Are you ready? Good, now, make this more of a core movement. Don't think so much about the shoulders. Think about your back, the mid back, and think about the tight core that you need for this position. Good, one of the, user, one of the reasons why lifters, barbell lifters use belts is not, it's really not back support. It's so they can fill their belly up with air and push against that belt so they can protect their spine. You don't need a belt to do that. The belt is just a good reminder so you can feel it. You should be doing that as well when you're doing that seated shoulder press. All right, Abby, 30 seconds to go. Come on, way to press. Good, way to push them up. Again, she's controlling her breathing. She's inhaling as she's bringing the dumbbells down to the floor, and she's exhaling as she's pressing them up and squeezing her chest. Now, the good thing about dumbbells is you can rotate your grip in the position. All right, you're able to do that based on your needs. If it bothers your shoulder, rotate. All right, we've got eight seconds to go abs, and we're gonna finish strong here, guys. Again, we go quarter burpee to mountain jumper in three, two, one, and go. So I start down, quarter burpee, squat position, mountain jumper, quarter burpee, mountain jumper, quarter burpee, mountain jumper. So every other time you're coming up from a squat position. Come on, abs. Good, rock them out, guys. Come on, rock them out. You got 40 seconds to go. Good, squat position, mountain jumper. Squat position, mountain jumper. Keep repping them out, guys. 30 seconds, come on, Abby. Good, good. She's making sure she's getting her squat position down or she's secretly taking a break. This is hard, guys. This is a challenging workout. Stay grinding, you've got 20 seconds to go. Come on, Abby. There you go, landing flat-footed. Super important that you're landing flat-footed when you're in that squat position. Come on, 10 more seconds, Abby. Try to get another one in. All right, guys, stay with it. We've got five, four, three, one more, two, and one. Congratulations, great work, way to push. Great job, guys. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications for every workout that we do. We thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you tomorrow.